It's Mish Reddy here with Jake Matthews a couple of days before UFC Fight Night Melbourne. The question that everybody wants to know, Jake, how many bakeries and bread rolls have you raided in the lead up to this fight? Um, uh, not many in the last week. Uh, slack, off your game. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, we went, went past the Woolworths um, this morning and I was walking through the bakery area, but yeah, you know, we don't have long to go. I mean, I, haven't, I won't be eating today at all and I won't be eating tomorrow until about 11.30. Um, but at the same time, you can't really go crazy on junk food. It's got to be, you know, just, just health things, things that are going to energise you and get you ready for the fight. And then after the fight, it can go nuts. How is the weight cut going? Because you spoke to us about last time. A lot of people thought that you had a rough weight cut. You said it was the best one ever. How's this one going? You're a young guy. You're always growing. Has this one been on point? Is it getting tougher at all? No, nah, not at all. They get easier. I mean, this is no different. I think I'm probably a little bit lighter than any other weight cut I've done. But that's just every every event we change things we learn from the previous one um this one's been yeah perfect i mean I'm, i was pretty much as light as i've ever been and been water loading as well and still staying light so i think the switch is going to come out um, we get started tonight and we've got late way in tomorrow so probably finish it in the morning we were talking about it as a team and the funny thing about tomorrow's weigh-ins is you'll be one of the last people to get get to do a normal weigh-ins because as you know in america everybody gets to do the early weigh-ins and then they do a ceremonial ones are you sort of what's your thought there do you like the idea of doing an early weigh-in in front of not that many people and doing a ceremonial one where you just step on the scale and now you've made weight or are you happy that you're going to be stepping on the scale tomorrow in front of a group big group of people and there's a lot on the line and they're there to see it if it doesn't quite work out um yeah there's no there's no there's no pressure not making making weight. Um, we're all professionals, we're all going to make weight. Um, it, it is the hard part, I mean the fight, fight's the fun part, but um, but yeah I mean I've done the early weigh-in uh, in Vegas and it was good, you have about an extra six hours to to you know eat and enjoy. I understand why they didn't do it this time, I mean we're going to have, have to do it the night before, probably maybe gives us too much time, um, yet they have to sort of stick within regulation time, so you know we, it would have been good to get it seven between seven and nine this morning to do an early weigh-in and then do the ceremony one oh sorry tomorrow morning but um yeah it's only an extra couple of hours it does help but at the same time I've, we've done the ceremonial and official weigh-ins at the same time for my whole career so i'm used to it talk to, talk to us about that last fight it was your first big vegas show you fought kevin lee you know if, uh, it was a big step up in competition and didn't really go your way how tough was that loss on such a big card and what did you sort of come away you know with learning from it yeah, you know, you always learn from all your losses and um, the biggest thing I learned was don't have a set idea of what your opponent's going to do. Uh, you know, you know what their strengths are, um, you go in there with your game plan, but you still have to keep an open mind as well. I mean, we trained from all these previous fights, we thought he'd want to stay off the ground with me and want, want to stand up, so that's what we trained for and then went in there and he started bombarding my legs with double legs and I was just, just completely threw me off and I just thought, what, what's going on here? I don't know. And um, yeah, that's that just threw me off. And but now we know, you know, we know what Holbrook's um, pretty much know what he's going to try and do. But at the same time, be ready for anything. So that's the lesson we learnt. Um, yeah, it took, it took the loss hard as you do all, all fights. It's always going to haunt me this fight. But um, but the same as my other loss against James Vick, I I still feel if we fight again that I can beat them. I could just feel it in there that I just had it over him. It's another rematch added to the Jake Matthews list of revenge. Let's talk about getting ready for this fight. You flew in, your previous opponent, Johnny Cage. Apparently, he's been staying at your house, uh, staying with you guys, We've not only been training together, but hanging out. This is going to be a great idea for a future sitcom. Talk to us a little bit about what it's like having him here. He's a bit of a character. What have you guys been up to? And what has he added to your camp going into this fight? Yeah, we've got uh, Johnny Johnny Case. Case. Not the Mortal Kombat character. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we brought Johnny Case out. I mean, even though I've, I've uh, had two losses, even though I won the fight with, with Johnny, that's still the toughest opponent I've fought. Just mentally, he's got good mindset, and just just as an all-round fighter, he was a tough fight I've had. So he thought, why not bring him out? Um, and also, he, he's really good at simulating any type of opponent. Um, so even though Johnny's orthodox, he's able to stand southpaw for me. He's able to shoot my legs as we, we suspect Holbrook's going going to. So um, that's 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 why we brought him out, and it's probably the most beneficial thing we've done. Um, I mean. It's just, I feel, learning little tricks from Johnny about, you know, wrestling, getting up off the ground, things like that just makes me so much more confident for this fight. So definitely the best thing we've done. A lot of people for a long time have said, you know, you should go overseas and train with other camps. And you've always been very adamant that you're going to stay here. You've got your own training facility. But here you are flying in Johnny Case. Do you think this is something you'll do more of in the future? And sort of, you've spoken about sometimes it's hard to get all the Aussie guys together to sort of train and spar. Do you think you'll fly in more opponents in the future for sort of, you know, opponent-specific fights? 
Um, yeah, I mean, well, me and Johnny are pretty much friends now. So if Johnny needs help with his camps, I'll be over there in Arizona helping him train, um, vice versa. Um, I think I think it's a good way to do it. I don't I don't believe in the big camps. I think if you're not the top guy, you're not going to get any attention. I mean, you're going to get tougher and you're going to get beaten up in sparring, but you're not going to get that attention from the coaches that I get here. I mean... Here I've got three coaches that are all dedicated. I'm the only UFC fighter they train, so all their attention goes to me. And I think the only thing you need to do is find one or two good training partners for a training camp. Um, and, and also, I mean, I'm, I train with Dan Kelly, all the other Aussie guys, but we're used to each other's styles and you can sort of, you know, nullify each other and just have a lot of stalemates all the time, where Johnny's someone completely different. So when we brought him in, you know, you have trouble and you've got to learn to, to cope with that, so that's another good... Do you think you would ever bring Kevin Lee in? I mean, he spoke about how afterwards you had beers with him and you had a chat and you guys got along and kind of same thing happened with Johnny Case. Do you think you would ever bring Kevin Lee in? Um, no, I think it's a bit different. I think... I think the, what what drew me to Johnny was just I don't know he's just just his mindset. I mean Kevin Kevin's tough, but I could feel in that fight that if we fought again I could beat him easily. Where with me and Johnny, we could fight ten times and it could go either way. Each fight, I mean you never know. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's weird that I've lost two fights and I won the one with Johnny, but he's still the toughest toughest opponent I've had. So that's the reason I brought him out, and he's just real super easy to get along with as well. You mentioned in this fight with Holbrook, you feel like the way to victory is going to be through a Renaker check. It was just a feeling that you've had. You mentioned this in a previous interview. Is that the, still the feeling that you've got right now? Um, I don't have any predictions for this fight. I mean, I'd like to get a knockout, uh, a clean knockout, my first one in the UFC. And if it goes to the floor, then I'll look for submission, TKO. I mean, I like my ground and pound, so however the fight goes. Um, this, this is, again, something I've learned. You know, don't go in with the set. I want to finish him with a rear naked check or a triangle or knock him out. Just whatever presents itself, I'll take it. And, um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. We haven't seen you as excited in a long time as when we saw you got a brand new motorbike. <laughs> Australia's version of uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Talk to us about that. And is that something you've been doing a lot of in the lead up to this fight? Uh, yeah, obviously tapering off closer. I mean, I think the last time I, I rode was just a light ride about three weeks out from the fight. So, but yeah, looking forward. I mean, I just got my new bike and um, haven't ridden that yet, actually. So still just still sitting in the garage waiting for, the, for this fight to be over and then we'll go go um got the whole christmas holidays to ride it so it'll be good